Welcome back to Honeycombing through the years with Allison and April. Woo! We're here today to get the buzz on our one and only Vana. <laughs> from turning my head too fast, a three-minute coughing fit, and a ransacked tissue box. I sit at my desk in front of my students, my body beginning to sweat, my back and neck aching, and I try to teach them. I try to teach them the difference between abstract and concrete, the difference between good poetry and bad. Hey, Mr. V, you okay, man? And I say, I am a Georgia peach. I am the Florida sunshine warming a ripe pineapple. I am the Energizer bunny. I am the glorious rings of the planet Saturn. I am the angel Gabriel made flesh. I am a gladiator. shower. I am a butterfly in a meadow on a spring day. I am a two-seater bicycle. I am the smell of her hair. I am a child being thrown into the air by her father. I am a smile on Alex Trebek's face. I I'm a plus, plus sized woman who knows she is beautiful. I am the final hope for humanity. I am Mr. November. Oh, okay, okay Mr. V. <laughs> and I am reminded that poetry and sarcasm seldom trade germs. As the creator of the Echo, how was it? creating the echo. <laughs> Please tell me you guys aren't always this bad. <laughs> um. I'm crying, oh my god. Nathan, you wanna rephrase that? Um. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, how was it like starting the echo? How was it like? It was like me not really knowing what I'm doing and saying like, hey, Creative Writing Club, you should make a lit mag. And they were like, oh, what's that? Um, that's a cool idea. And then Jake Biddle wrote on Miss Siren's board a bunch of ideas for names and then we like voted on one and it was the echo. And uh, yeah, and then things just kind of went slowly from there. You know, I was uh, a, a new teacher uh, didn't have creative writing classes yet. They, um, and, and I didn't really pay much attention to the creative writing club that met once a month. <laughs> and at the end of the year, some of the kids were like, hey, we made a lit mag. And I was like, oh, really? When? <laughs> um, and they did a good job. They did it in like a newspaper with Mr. Flasky himself. Um, I think I helped them like set up the Gmail that we use now. And we, I talked to them about like getting submissions and how to read them. I think that was the end of my involvement. Um, but then the next year they started to involve me a little bit more. So I was like, oh, this is a thing. And I started it on accident. Um, <laughs> so it, and then it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I got to know the kids more and they got to, and I had creative writing classes. So like there were kids who were in my classes and I knew them like the original few echo kids. I, I don't know. They were a bunch of newspaper kids. I don't know who they were. <laughs> I remember Jake. 
One of them was named Natalie. I got that's all I got. <laughs> so what is the story behind the Echo's name? Uh it's the um the the Greek myth of uh Echo and Narcissus. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why'd you go with that one? Uh well I didn't choose it. Um oh, okay. we, uh, I, later, Allison. We so huh? that's for Jake's interview. <laughs> Well, you me. God, so um, did you text me? Oh, no, you did not. Uh, let's see. Um, the Everything at Steinbrenner is, like, Greek-themed for no good reason at all. Um, I, the uh, It's true. Um, we're, we're named after George Steinbrenner, and he always called his baseball players his warriors. So we decided to be the warriors, and that's what I know, right? It's a great story. Um, mm-hmm. And... Right, so somebody was like, oh, we'll do the warrior helmet then, which is just a ripoff of Michigan State, but it's like a Greek helmet. <laughs> and um, because of that, um, the yearbook was named The Odyssey, and the newspaper was named The Oracle, and something else has like a Greek name. So we're like, oh, we gotta do, we're the lit mag, so I guess that's like art and stuff. So I remember Jake Biddle being in front of the room being like, I guess I'll write down the Greek muses on the board. Um, <laughs> Which is kind of it's just, Echo is kind of a sad story. I mean, it is. Yeah. yeah um, it's you know, nobody listens to her, and the guy she loves is in love with himself. So, <laughs> I guess we deserve to be a place that publishes a bunch of angsty teen poetry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so when you started, so I know that you had previously said that you kind of started the whole lit mag thing on accident. But um, I guess when you started the creative writing club, did you ever imagine that it would become so successful or turn into a class? No, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely hope that like, we could do more with it. I think I, I had in the back of my mind, I was like, I'd really love to teach creative writing. I hadn't really thought about the club too much with what it would become. Um, but, you know, I did, um, I don't know if we had a creative writing club when I was in high school, but I think we had a poetry club. And through that and the creative writing class in high school, I got involved with my school's lit mag. Um, and uh, so I, somewhere in my brain was like, ah, maybe I could be that, have that happen here. That'd be a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a common theme when we did a bunch of other interviews with like um, other people is that you were like this big inspiration for them. They'll always talk about learning all of these incredible tips for writing from your classes that they carry on with some of them in their new teaching careers. So was there anyone for you that really inspired you as a teacher? What, like uh, somebody who's inspired me to be a teacher? Or just like inspired the way that, the attitude you have with teaching. Oh, interesting. Um, So in high school, I gravitated towards a couple of teachers. They were all social studies teachers, actually. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them was a, a Mr. Miskevich, who was really young um, guy and very informal, uh, very much, I think you guys would identify my personality and teaching <laughs> style a little bit. Definitely take some of that from him. I, I remember he was, I was in his AP government class one time, and he came in like really pissed off about something else. So he was, and he was like, I'm in a bad mood, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you guys about the French government, because the French government is effing stupid. Um, and then like the rest of class, he was like yelling at us about the French government. I remember at one point he was like, why aren't you guys taking notes? And we were like, oh, we thought you were just mad. And he was like, this is the lesson today. But the French government is stupid. He was writing on the board about how dumb their government set up. Um, so um, I definitely, I always connected with him. Um, he helped me form the Green Party Club when I was in high school. So there was some out of school stuff there. <laughs> One time we, we got out of school to do a field trip. I forget what we were doing. Oh, we went to an elementary school to like teach them how to recycle. It was cute. But afterwards we had like an, oh yeah, we had like recycling games. But there was like an hour where we just, like didn't, like school wasn't out yet, but we didn't know like anything to do. So he just took us to the mall and like, we, like just like hung out. And I was like, you know, some people might think this is weird, but like, this guy just, this is like a cool guy. And he's just hanging out with us and talking about life. Um, and then there was another teacher uh, who was actually his department head, the social study. He did the philosophy class. His name was Mr. Hauer. And I took his class because both my sisters were really inspired by Mr. Hauer. Um, and he was, he wasn't.
wasn't as much of like a young goofy loose guy like he was he was a, a lot older by the time i took him but he would just every day just like put his feet up on the desk and just start talking to us about philosophy in such like a chill like real way um and his lessons were really deep and impactful so when i became a teacher i was like i don't want to be like captain powerpoint i want to like teach like i do care about who's in the room i want to teach like from the heart and from what i know um so you know i try to do that sometimes i, I mean i have powerpoints but that i'm not captain powerpoint uh, at least i don't think i'm captain powerpoint <laughs> So you mentioned your teacher taking you to the mall. Can you do that with us next week? You want to go to the mall? <laughs> I remember the, 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 the back of Spencer's. The, oh my gosh. The, and that the weirdest part. Such an adventure. The weirdest part with Mr. Miscavige was he was like, we we're just hanging out at the mall, like killing time, right? We felt guilty about it. He was like, I don't want to let you guys go early. It's like one o'clock. So uh, I'll keep supervising you. But then there was a moment where we're walking by like Old Navy and he's like, oh, I need pants. <laughs> and he like, he's like, what about these? And we're like, I guess. And then he goes and like tries them on and comes out. And he's like, these look good? And we're like, yeah. And then he's talking about that. And we're like, can we just help our social studies teacher buy pants? <laughs> um, if it wasn't for a pandemic, I'd take you guys to the mall. I took oh Echo a few years ago to Orlando. That was an exciting adventure. Did you come to Orlando? Yeah, as a part of FSPA. We were the token lit mag. Oh, that's so cool. I remember they were so they felt so guilty because like they'd be in these literary magazines or they'd be in these sessions as part of the conference and they'd be like texting me and they're like, Come on, I don't want to be rude, but like this only has to do with your book. And I'm texting them back like, leave. Don't you're not stuck there and you're not a prisoner. And they're like, all these other people are like, their advisor's going to kill them if they don't go to sessions. And I'm like, that's because some people come here to screw around in the hotel room. You guys are telling me you're not going to learn anything. So meet me at the restaurant across the street. Uh, that was fun. That was a good time. That sounds a lot of fun. You know, I, I'm, I'm all about not wasting your time. Which people don't get because they're like, you waste time all the time. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm having fun. That's not a waste of time. <laughs> having fun is not a waste of time. 